Warning, the following content may contain spoilers for film and television programs. It is also intended for mature audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. cleaner for my uh, iPad. Ass cleaner? Yes, ass cleaner. I've been rubbing my ass all over my iPad because I tried to make my asshole my uh, fingerprint password. It didn't <laughs> work. You know every but uh, every butthole's like completely, it's like a fingerprint, right? It's like a snowflake. Yeah. yeah. Completely or, unique butthole prints. Yeah. All the more reason to never get arrested. <laughs> yep. And I guarantee you, <laughs> you don't want nobody's going to try and steal my iPad. No. And if it's if got a little still... starfish on it. <laughs> yeah. It's got something on it called the brown ring of death. Yeah. <laughs> that just sounds lovely. On like too many different levels, really. Why is this so messy? Is he eating chocolate donuts over his <laughs> iPad all the time? He's all either day. he's either setting down donuts on his iPad in the morning or rubbing his dirty butthole on it. And it's one of the two. And we don't know which. The only way to tell would be to lick it and find out. I think there are other ways, probably. I don't think so. I think science says Uh, use your tongue. I think there are... I don't think it comes down to just that decision. Every scientist I've ever met has responded with use your tongue. Just lick it and see. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, that was was definitely (laughs) how chemistry class went. That's my Hank Hill. (laughs) Boy ain't right. (laughs) My boy ain't right. Dad, what's this on the iPad? (laughs) That's just my poop, son. That's a piece of corn, Bobby. (laughs) Ahoy, all of you flick freaks out there. What is going on? That is the worst way to start a podcast in the history of podcasts. I think we've had worse starts. Do you Uh, really think so? I think that's that's up there. We're we're working on breaking our own record like consistently. So yeah, this is going to be episode eighty-four of the podcast. Joining me today, we have Jareth, Brian, and special guest David. Hello, hello. Everybody doing all right today on this fine Saturday? No. No? We were until that uh, conversation that opened the podcast. Yeah. I was doing great until that thing where I had to wake up. At noon? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you don't go to bed till like 5 in the morning or anything. Uh, Like 8. Jareth has been gracious enough to help level up my palette in World of Warcraft while I've been trying to catch them all out in the real world. And I have to admit... I've got a Pokemon Go sunburn. I'm very proud of it. So. I have just a regular being out in the sun sunburn. Nice. I don't have a sunburn. No? Lucky dog. I've done all my catching at night, so I just have the Pokemon Go sore legs epidemic. Yeah. So, David, you were there, but I didn't see you at the event. Well, there were th- over 3,000 people there. Oh, yeah. But we recorded a video and posted it on our channel last night. The Battle for the Square, 3,000 people showed up in downtown Springfield, Missouri to try and catch legendary Pokemon and to take over the gym right in the middle of downtown Springfield and Square. What an event. Yeah. It was Left Shark was there. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, we had... What is DJ. Left Shark? It was in Katy Perry's... Oh, you, didn't watch, you don't watch football, do you? Uh, no. Even the Super Bowl? Especially the Super Bowl. Well, during Katy Perry's, it was last year, right? Uh, or was it two years ago? Let's see. Is at least two, maybe three okay. years ago? She wow. was the halftime entertainment. Yeah, halftime entertainment with Katy Perry, and one of she had a shark on the left side and a shark on the right side. The shark on the right side was doing all the choreography for the dance, and the left shark was just going crazy. So it became an internet sensation. Weird. I'm no, glad I don't, we, I don't remember that. Really? No. I'm pretty sure I watched that. Left Shark was like the biggest thing on the internet for like, what, five months? Easily. Yeah. See, that must have been during one of my stints of not engaging in the internet. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we've been able to catch you up on the goings. Thank on. you. So. Because now, now I get the Left Shark joke and like, wow and stuff. You're like, oh my God, a Left Shark? Oh, yeah, like, one yeah. Of your, one of your uh, pets? See, I thought like it was a left shark, as in like it was left somewhere, like out of the water. <laughs> so it's, it's not a magic carp. That's yeah. when left shark turns into dead shark. Well, no, it's floating around a little bottle. bottle, bottle. What's it, your favorite quote from Wicker Man? Uh, okay, well, that's debatable, but probably my favorite quote from uh, the Wicker Man remake with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, 
is he okay? First off, he's a police officer assigned to find a missing girl, so he goes to an island, and two women are carrying a dripping bloody bag, and you might stop them and question them, right? Because you're looking for a missing person, as one police That's officer normal should one do. On an island. He yeah. stops them, looks at them, and says, "Well, what's in the bag? You got a shark or something?" <laughs> And then he goes on about his day. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> and that is why Wicker Man yeah. starring Nick Cage is the greatest movie World's of all greatest time. detective. It's right up there with Put the Bunny Back in the Box. You yeah. yes. got a shark or something. Or uh, somebody get these fucking iguanas off my coffee table. That's another one. That was from a Bad Detective, wasn't it? Bad Lieutenant. Or yeah. Bad Lieutenant. He he got a promotion. So. Yeah, he got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think he like throws stuff at people in a pharmacy. Yeah, my favorite line from Bad Lieutenant is "Shoot him again." Why? Because the soul is still dancing. Yeah, that's pretty. That's great my also. favorite line from that entire movie. And the, Werner Herzog has an excuse there, though, because he can just say, "Well, my character was, you know, snorting a lot of cocaine." Yeah. Uh, although that's a good excuse, for one a lot does of not things. know for sure how deeply Nicolas Cage engaged in this role. He was. He could have been. Um, what's it called? It's not character he could have been a method acting method acting yeah. yeah so he could have done a shitload of cocaine is yeah, what you're saying exactly yeah. off like his t-rex skull that he carries around with him exactly actually i think he gave the t-rex skull back didn't he did he give the t-roll he gave something back yeah, maybe he, he gave, gave back that back something. in order ordered to keep to. that action comics because i know that was what sent him over into debt was that action comics well not i i remember reading a story where like he bought something i think it was the t-rex skull and then, like, the nation that it came from was like, that was stolen. And he was like, oh, sorry. Oh, shit. I didn't know. Well, hear and he that. owns like 15 castles also. Yeah. So if you're in the market for a castle. I mean, it was a stupid clickbait article, so God knows if it's accurate. So, Fuck Jareth, those things. you're wearing a Superman shirt. Uh, yeah. Even though you don't like Superman. Yeah. It, but I did, do like having my chest area covered, though. Did you. Have you ever seen the set pictures? Of Nicolas Cage as Superman because he was going to play Superman. What you guys? You guys have heard that. Yeah. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. It's they have him in a black wig, like a big pompadour wig. It's shocking that he's in a wig. Yeah. Since he always is in a wig because of his weird vulture hairline. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But we're gonna have to show you this. Actually, uh, Brian, you mind looking that up on your phone? Just show to Jareth while I uh, do. I talk about Ghostbusters. Here's a weird fun fact, real fast. My dad kind of looks like Nicolas Cage. That is like the Seriously? greatest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. We need your dad to be on this podcast. Your yeah. dad also famously recommended one of the worst movies that I've ever seen. Yep. What was it? Man, uh, the something. The Man from Earth. The Man from Earth. That never movie heard of was it. super bad. It like was, bad in a good way or did it translate? Well, it was pretty hilarious. Did it go from <laughs> bad to good or did it go it from bad from, to good to bad? Yeah, it looped all the way back around to bad again. Mm. Okay, oh, that's, so. That's... Not even, that's okay. Yeah, here you go. No, wow. it's, it's a true. It's a real thing. I would show you, but I just keep looking it's, at these. It's Nicholas Cage as Superman as the front man for Nickelback. Yeah. Why? Yeah, he could do that. Like, All right. I love Nick Cage. I want him to be in good things. Do you like him why? as a novelty character, or do you actually like him as an actor? I actually like Nicholas Cage. Well, he's, yeah, I, he's I, I definitely a talented guy. He's. I mean, he's been good a lot of times. He's just in a bunch of shitty shit. I think we all miss Nicolas Cage's better performances. I don't but, know. I'm having fun with the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> who, who the hell? And the good ones. Who chose, who's like, ah, Superman. Let's get fucking Nick Cage in here. How did I he get He doesn't burnt? have the chin for it. That's, like I, that's what he was screaming whenever Krypton was burning behind him. How did I get burnt? Well, How for did some, I get burnt? For some reason, in the same week, I watched Joe... Which he was in, and that was I, good. He was great in that. Joe and then was really good. days later, I watched, um, I don't know, Seeking Justice or Vengeance or some shit like that. Is that the one that had uh, uh, Guy Pierce? In yeah, it? the yeah. one with Guy Pierce, where in order to enact revenge on his wife's rapist, he needs to go buy some candy bars. The Kit Kat. So thing. Uh, yeah. no, yeah. they're called like uh, Wonder Bar. It's a fake product. Oh, I thought he had he had to go to a vending machine and buy yeah. a, like go buy like C4. two. Yeah, and they try to be dramatic about it, and then also he has to go to the zoo and like put something in a mailbox. There actually is a candy bar called a uh, Wonder Bar. Well, no, I was Wonder just bar. saying a thing. I don't think that's actually what it was called. Okay, I, I don't remember what it was called, which is a damn shame. Because I remember, you know what it means. Means we got to watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. It probably does. <laughs> All right, so guys, for has anybody here seen Ghostbusters yet? Not Busters, nope. no. 
Uh, several times in my childhood. The new one. Oh, no, I have not. Well, I'm going to review it for you guys. All right. So, is, is it good? This is probably the most controversial <laughs> film to come out in a very long time. Since what, like Irreversible? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, people are going into this with their minds already made up if they're going to hate this movie oh, or not. Their first trailer was awful. It was really bad. So, simply for the fact that what I'm going to say isn't going to change anybody's mind. So keep that in here. I'm pointing at my brain. So don't let our he minds get our changed pants. by you? Yeah. Is well, that what you're saying? Well, I mean, like, there's going to be people out there like, oh, they shouldn't have done an all-women's Ghostbusters. They shouldn't well, have even remade Ghostbusters. I, like, I can't believe women can vote. Yeah, exactly. And everybody can suck a dick. So first even off. Even the women. I did. <laughs> I did laugh in this movie. Oh, yeah. I did laugh. Okay. I, I do want to see it. There definitely are some funny parts in it. Kate McKinnon stole this movie. Uh, she, which one? She is the blonde, pretty one that I'm going to marry one day. She has. She's mm. the one like. Okay. Is, is, we'll have so to now, ask her no, about now that. I know who she is because. <laughs> yeah, she's the one in the, Chris in the trailer. She's like, it, it's the. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'll marry Chris Hemsworth. It's very handsome man. Shit, I'd marry Sounds Chris hot. Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah. From walking around, people would be like, yeah, I'm married to this blonde woman. I married fucking Thor, so suck a dick. I can lift Thor's hammer. You know what that means. Hello. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, he's I don't in think this. You could. So, Kate McKinnon, <laughs> she's the one in the trailer. She was like a. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. She's like, is it the wig that's too much? Is it the hat or the wig? She's got the goofy glasses. Yeah. She's, yeah. That's my favorite joke from like the whole trailer. Yeah. yeah. Her. She was okay. the best part of the whole movie. Now, actually, um, Chris Hemsworth was really funny in this. He played the uh, I'm so handsome, I'm not that smart kind of guy. Cause I've been kind of waiting for him to play one of those. It's I figured this he could, movie. He could do that. Yeah. And he does a great job. Actually, he's been getting a lot of flack for it because people have been saying that sexist. I'm tired of that word being thrown around, by the way. Sexist. Yeah. <laughs> because, like... If it was a woman playing this role, the super pretty woman who's just stupid because nobody she's would so bat an eye. No, everybody would be furious. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's been done so I many times. I feel like we shouldn't throw sexist at Chris Hemsworth. We should throw another sexy. "i" in there. Sexiest. Yeah, sexiest. No, it's accurate. Not. No, you throw in an e. You don't spell sexy with x i s. You're right. I-I-S-T. No, I want, I want two eyes. <laughs> like s e x i i. Two eyes, so you can look yeah. at that him for like the rest a, of your life. Like kind of vodka. <laughs> it's yeah. a Swedish pronunciation, right? Yes. Yeah. Sexy CGI in this movie. The ghost also very controversial because they don't look like the ghost from the original one. You know, which We've who got, cares, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that it looked really cool. Yeah, I thought it looked really good. Now there are some bad things in this movie, which I think we all can guess. This movie is. Far from perfect. Yeah. So they fucking beat you into the ground with references, cameos, that's, and and homages and winks to the original that's film. That's kind of what I was afraid of because you, you need to do that sparingly. It's bad. Like, it's really bad. Especially, like, trying to make your own, your own way in the franchise. Don't build on the bones of the old one too hard. Exactly. And we, make your own way. We get it, Paul Feig. You're a fan of the original Ghostbusters. Yeah. Guess what? We've all seen it. You don't have to show us yeah. half of that movie in this one. And I don't know... Okay, one thing that does bother me, I guess, about the backlash against Ghostbusters being remade... Uh, Andrew, you and I, uh, I know for sure, are the exact age to where Ghostbusters would have been something you'd seen at the right age as a kid. Yeah. You know? It came out eighty uh, five. I think so. Like whenever eighty eight or something like that, we were really young, yeah. if not like babies. When it yeah, came out. but by the time it got to video and stuff, that's when we would have seen it. Exactly. So I don't have Ghostbusters like, scared the shit out of me. When yeah, I was a parts kid. of it did, the which dogs, is hilarious. The, now the giant hounds. Yeah, oh, yeah. the fucking dogs scared the shit out of me as a kid too. Yeah. I love them. But I don't but. hold that movie in like um, some sort of untouchable high regard like it shouldn't be it's like a fun movie but it's not i get where people like i'm not like so ignorant to the fact like some people out there are like ghostbusters was my childhood because yeah, everybody f- has a movie that was their childhood yeah. a lot of people at star a, wars a lot of people at star wars a lot of people it is ghostbusters i'm yeah. not ignorant to that fact and i did love ghostbusters growing up but but it's Fern Gully and that's uh, no <laughs> yeah Fern Gully but uh, Bible goes west so here's a Shit, huge yeah, problem goes west. here's a huge problem with this movie this movie felt twenty minutes too long 
and the movie's only 116 minutes. Yeah. So mm. if a movie's not even that long and it feels too long, the writing was not all that I great. I actually saw this when I was I peeked at your notes. <laughs> oh, you little so sneaky poo. One I <laughs> one Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. Can we just stop? <laughs> yeah, he just mildly said shame that. Andrew cuz he just said sneaky poo. I, you need to regret everything you've done up I think to this I point. regret of yourself. I regret nothing. Um so because I got to laugh out of Brian. And out that, of, that's my goal. In out life. of recent comedies I'm starting to realize something. 116 minutes. That's probably too long for most comedies, right? Hour and a half. Like 90-ish. Stick at 90. Because, I mean, comedies, uh, they just wear out their welcome if you go too long with them. Well, I I think some of them do. I I think a lot of them do, but that's not necessarily indicative of the genre. It's just indicative of... Well, I think it's indicative of humor as a thing. Um, A lot of that ties into the pace, you know the energy and the yeah. pacing that you're going for in your movie if you're going for that high energy comedy yeah after about 90 to 100 minutes it's like i'm done can we get off okay this i gotta do i something might get back else. in line later but i'm done for now yeah, yeah. it's it, horror is the same way for me i think yeah. it's kind of like anything that's really subjective and really you uh, kind of you blow your load early and then you're just like why am i still here yeah it's a fast thrill ride and then you like uh, yeah you're you're done it's like for you go moment. go over the loop, and then it's just a flat roller coaster after that. And you're like, but I watched Ooh. Zodiac again the other day, and that's a hundred hours long, and I was fine with that. You know, so it's, it's a different kind of thing. I, I think that a lot of it, like Andrew said, is it's it's got a lot to do with writing. Because I mean, yeah. being able to pace it correctly to to ramp you up correctly into all of those spots and what you're and doing if you if it's a, a comedy where you're blending in a whole lot more in terms of plotting. You know, and character development and stuff. Maybe you can go longer. Yeah, it's like how long is Hot Fuzz? Yeah, that's it's not it's long enough. An hour and fifty minutes or something. Yeah, like that. and I wanted it to keep going. Yeah, for like ever. So, like, but there's a lot of plotting in that movie. Well, yeah, there's a weirdly a lot of thought in that fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sum up this review. This is not the worst movie of all time, but it's definitely not the best movie of all time. So it's like all movies. <laughs> it's not even the best comedy of this year. So, uh, what, would what you say is? is the best comedy of this year? I have no idea. Keanu's up head. there. Keanu is awesome. I still haven't seen Keanu yet. It's pretty great. I don't have. Well, actually, I do have my list right here. Anybody who doesn't like Keanu is a communist. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I just going to throw that out. I do out like there. I do like uh, Key and Peele, and I like cute kittens. So I feel like it's for me. It was uh, so I like much. cute kittens. So. If you can count the nice guys. As a comedy, the Ryan Gosling. Russell I saw Crow. that last it night. What do you think? Is. I really liked it. That's pr- if you do you count that as a comedy? I do. I then, well, yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, it is. It Deadpool's is. also a, a funnier movie than this. I, also, I would say that Zootopia the nice is guys, funnier. Finding, Zootopia's from this year. Yeah. yeah. I'm. I don't know time. The nice guys had a lot of. Uh, this is funny. I didn't realize it when I was watching it, but it had a lot of the kiss, kiss, bang, bang feel, and then I realized it was the same director. Yeah. So uh, I, I would say that, that he made Lethal time. Weapons. He made all those. So. I'd say right now, probably uh, The Nice Guys is my favorite comedy overall. I like Keanu more as a movie. Yeah. Just because it plays. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. That's true either. I, I like them both. They're very different films. Last but. night I watched The Nice Guys and Green Room back to back. That was a weird. I have not seen Green Room. <laughs> a yet. Weird two things to watch. I really want to see Green Room. Is it worth a watch? Yeah, it's re- it's really good. Good. Yeah. Okay. So now it's time to move on to the Freak Leaks, the news segment of the podcast. Oh, you skipped a section. Oh yeah, thank you. Because it got cut off here. So yeah. Uh, guys, we got a here. we got a store. If you head over to shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash flick freaks, you can find out that we have t-shirts, coffee mugs, phone tablet cases, all the great paraphernalia you could ever ask for. We have some promo codes that we're going to be posting later. I don't have them in front of me because they're being sent to me today. But now it's time to move on to the freak leaks, the news segment. Take a leak all over these freaks. Emmy nominations. Lots they have been released. Of fluids today. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm not going to go over every single. I'm just going to go over the big nominations. Tell me, guys, which ones you think should win. Okay. All right? Best drama series. We have The Americans, Game of Thrones, House of Cards, Downton Abbey, Better Call Saul, Mr. Robot, and Homeland. I don't know. It's really difficult for me. <laughs> I have watched none of them, so I'm going to go with Mr. Robot. I hear it's really good. Well, having, 
having just watched season one, I would go with Mr. Robot. That show I just phenomenal. watched all of the Americans in like four seconds, and it is great. That's what everybody Did you says. Yeah. Watch like, it on like super fast forward. Or? I watched it on Amazon Prime Video. <laughs> so and it's it is so good, and I I didn't know what to expect, and so that gets my vote. I would not day. be uh, I would not be upset if Mr. Robot won, but honestly, this past season of Game of Thrones is. Probably the best season of any show in history, and that's not hyperbole. Mm. For me, that was... I don't feel that way, but I really didn't enjoy it. It was, for me, the best thing. Like, better than season four or five of Dexter, whichever the Lithgow season was. Four. Which was, for me, the best season of any show ever. Um, I, I feel like this past season of Game of Thrones could have been improved, though, if, like, Strong Bell West was in it. Mm. Yeah. Who dat? <laughs> Do you not remember? You read, didn't you read the the books? I read Jareth? the books. Yeah, Strong Bellus, the Dothraki guy that just like laughs all the time and slaps his belly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like. Anyway, that I wanted. Doesn't him, he like pee him on like some? Oh, or I'm something? sure he pees on a lot of things, and yeah. then he like cuts his own belly one time just to be like, ha, 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 and then yeah. like punches a guy off a horse. And I mean, no. <laughs> why wouldn't you want that in the show? And no Lady Stoneheart. And yeah, no Lady Stoneheart that's yet. Upsetting. I really thought that was happening. I did at too. At the end of that season. I thought that would be like the epilogue at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't happen. Best comedy series. We have Veep, Transparent, Silicon Valley, Modern Family, Master of None, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and Blackish. Mm. Still got nothing. Silicon Valley for me. Yeah, me too. That's... Probably besides Archer, the funniest show on TV right Although, now. Although, <laughs> if there was a special award for a time I laughed the hardest in a show, it would be in, over the past couple of years. It would be uh, an episode in season one of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt when John Hamm says he's got, <laughs> he's in court and he says he's going to sing a little song about Jesus and then he starts singing that one-eyed purple people eater song. Yeah. And I just lost it. John Hamm has some He's comedy really good, chops. He really does. I didn't expect that. He was great. He honestly was like one of the best parts of that show. Yeah. All right. So coming up now, best actor in a drama series. We have Kyle Chandler for Bloodline, Rami Malek for Mr. Robot, Bob Odenkirk for Better Call Saul, Matthew Reese for The Americans, Leif Schreiber for Ray Donovan, and Kevin Spacey for House of Cards. I'm going to go with either Bob Odenkirk or Remy Malik. Bob Odenkirk for me. Really? Yeah. God, he's so good. I would go with Remy Malik. He gives a phenomenal performance in it's Mr. Robot. It's something I've never seen before, really. Jareth, do you feel a need to defend Kevin Spacey right now? Because you kind of look like him? I don't see it. I'm like one of... I guess I'm the only one that doesn't it's, see it. It's more John Cusack than Kevin Spacey. But <laughs> I got a little bit of that. all of this. Yeah. I don't like this joke. <laughs> right. It's the best joke. All right, do you now, like that better or the wizard joke? The last one we'll do... I like the wizard joke better. The last one we'll do is best <laughs> actress in a drama series. We have Viola Davis and How to Get Away with Murder, Claire Danes for Homeland, Taraji P. Henson for Empire, Tatiana Masali, or Maslani, sorry for Orphan Black, Carrie Russell for The Americans, and Robin Wright for House of Cards. Is Tatiana Maslani like... Can she be nominated for multiple awards since she's like 12 characters? people, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've never seen a single episode of Orphan Black. I, I haven't hear, either. It's I hear super she's good. like one of the best performances So we ever. should watch that, Jareth, you're saying. Yeah, it's super good. So I'm going to put my money on her, but for the ones I've seen, I would go with Robin Wright. I guess I've only seen Robin Wright and Carrie Russell then. Yeah. In, in their roles. So I don't really have a way to judge this. <laughs> How is Carrie Russell in the American? Uh, she's really good, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to do actor and actress in a com- comedy series? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, uh, Just because I want to know. Best actor in a comedy series, we have uh, Anthony Anderson for Blackish. You're not going to lie. Have you guys seen that show? I think like, I saw the first episode. It's actually it's funny. Okay. It's actually funny. It gets really funny. Then you have Aziz Ansari for Master of None, Will Forte for Last Man on Earth, William H. Macy for Shameless, Thomas Middleditch for Silicon Valley, and then Jeffrey Tambor for Transparent. I don't know. Will Forte for me. Yeah. Last Man on Earth. Aziz Ansari was pretty good in Master of None. I didn't finish the series season. That I, I, know, I like, did. It's good. What, one thing I like about his performance there, and I'm not saying this makes his performance better than anyone else's, but he shows more depth than he ever has by far. Like even in Parks and Rec? Yeah, because in Parks and Rec, he's almost like uniformly 
uh, like a materialistic douchebag the whole way through. Yeah. But he it comes across as much more of a real human being. Oh, okay. I love Parks and Rec, but, you know. I'm going to just assume that Jeffrey Tambor is going to win. Yeah. But, uh, he probably has the most challenging role. Mm-hmm. Best actress in a comedy series, we have Ellie Kemper for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Julie, Julia Louise Dreyfus for Veep, which I've never seen that show. Either. I haven't either, and I feel like I should. Why yeah. is it called Veep? She's the vice president. Not getting it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Moving along. Uh, uh, Lori Metcalf for Getting On. I've never heard of that. Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish. Uh, Amy Schumer for Inside Amy Schumer. And Lily, Tom- Lily Tomlin for Grace and Frankie. I'll just go with uh, Ellie Kemper. Yeah, that would be Kimmy my Schmidt. vote, too. Although yeah. I feel like Lily Tomlin would probably end up winning. Grace and Frankie's pretty great. It's actually really funny. Super cool how I've seen like none of these shows. I don't watch TV. I've seen more than I thought I had. I actually wasn't aware that I'd seen as much as I have. All right. The next uh, subject up for this new segment, we have set pictures have been released for the next season of The Flash, where we see uh, Wally West, finally, and we get to see his cool yellow suit. I'm the only one here that says he washes the flash. So, uh, yeah, it was a great season. And the way they set up this uh, season three coming up, I can't wait for it. It's one of the things I'm most excited for because after reading the comics and knowing what's coming up, it's going to be great. I feel like DC has a weird concept of how speed works. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> consistently they're like, hey, if you go fast, you can change time. Does they anybody do seem to believe that, don't they? Do you guys want to know how season two ends? Are you afraid? I don't know. Watch it, but it's okay. not going to. Even if I do watch it, I won't it, remember that you it, told me this. It probably. sets up the flashpoint paradox. <gasps> I heard that. That's yeah. the one that I don't really care about. That everyone loves a lot. It's my all-time favorite DC story. Yeah, the one that I super don't really care for. Yeah. I actually just watched yeah. that on Netflix not too long ago. The movie is amazing. Oh, that movie is so good. Um, so yeah, they released uh, Wally West. He's got the cool suit, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. The two big ones, though, we finally get to see Bill Skarsgård playing Pennywise in the upcoming remake of It. Brian and I are probably going to be there day one to see that movie. Yeah, I'm going to watch that. <sighs> Man, this Childhood movie. memories hashtag. It's still, probably backwards. besides uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, the scariest thing from my childhood. Oh man, The Thing is so good. Yeah. The other day yeah. I thought about how I wanted to rewatch that. I, I can't rewatch it. It scares the shit out of me. But uh It's super like the practical effects in it are fucking spot on. Yeah. They hold up. Oh yeah. Weirdly. Yeah. Because like I, I, whenever the scuddly hold up. the scuddly thing, for you're me, like, nope. For me it was the the dogs that got me. Oh, when it's all like Yeah. 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 That's, That's a really good description, Jareth. That's roughly exactly how you describe it. <laughs> and then finally, we get to see Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba in The Dark Tower. Now, this is some things I got some uh, little bit of caution with, uh, mainly because their costumes. I'm fine with Matthew McConaughey looks great. He looks super cool as the man in black. But Idris Elba, he looks too clean. His clothes aren't tattered. They're not worn down. He's like... Got shiny buckles and stuff like that. Maybe the man he picked been... up a new set. <sighs> it's just... Like, I mean, we're we're at the end of a cycle, right? And he's restarting a cycle. Yeah. Just... So maybe maybe his clothes recycle too. Recycle, reduce, reuse. Well, I mean, at least you'll know going in. The acting will be solid. At, yeah. At worst. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen Idris Elba do worse than a like nine. And uh, it's directed from the same guy who directed the well, original uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the Swedish version. Ghost Rider 2. He was what? in Ghost Rider 2? There's a Ghost Rider 2? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know he was in that. Idris Elba, yeah. Wow. What? All yeah. I know is he was in Pacific Rim and he was great. He hams it up a lot, though, so it's it's useful. I mean, He and Nicolas Cage have some really high-octane scenes. I'll I mean, maybe that. it's just because he's in, you know, Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider, Rider 2, so yeah. he's like, well... I'm here. They're paying me. Let's fucking do this. Oh, he's also nominated for an Emmy this year for Luther. I'm oh, that makes sense. Throwing that out there. Um, next up, we have Javier Bardem is being I to play the creature slash Adam in the upcoming adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I I think that'd be good. He yeah. terrifies the fuck out of me since No Country for Old Men. Yeah, he's going to actually Quote have it. that same bowl cut. 
uh, as well, he did. I think well, just yeah. picturing his face, this makes a perfect choice. Yeah. And he naturally has bolts in his neck. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> just <laughs> works out. I don't think they've released any, like, casting for Victor yet, do you guys? Uh, carte Blanche, you can cast whoever you want. Who do you want to play Victor Frankenstein? Me? Yeah. Could I, could I be Victor Frankenstein? Right. <laughs> no. Go for it. I mean, I feel like that would come with a decent paycheck. I'd, I'd do it. Yeah. It's alive! <laughs> yeah, see? No, that was no. very good. I'm, it's the early. It goes to. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Dern. <laughs> That's like the first person that came to mind. Who's that? Uh, You would know if you saw him. He Well, he was in, uh, he's in the Burbs. He was in Nebraska. He's the old guy. Wait, who was he in the Burbs? He's that neighbor guy. He's oh, in, okay. He's so in I know uh, the Hateful is. Eight. Yeah. yeah, he's in the Hateful Eight. Don't watch Hateful Eight. I've oh, not seen Hateful Eight yet. Okay. Um, um, that's actually I, really good. Yeah. This is out there. I think I would go with Alan Tudyk. I think he'd be a great mad scientist. I'm going to go with him pull, just because that's a I weird I think he shot. could pull off a, you know, a heavy, serious role. I'm going to go with Jeremy Irons. Okay. I think that might be, be my favorite I think one. you guys are really underestimating yeah, like me. That. <laughs> and you have to wear that Superman shirt on set. Well, probably not if it's set in 1840. What about the green shirt? Sure. I just don't think it would work at all uh, to have Victor running around eating like you know piles of meat and. <laughs> I don't see why like, not. Out of bread bowls and like um, doing you know talking about video games. It's in acting. I'm not gonna be me. Are you going to go the, the method approach? <laughs> well, even if I don't go method, I'm still not going to be me. I like the idea of that, though. Jareth's... I like the just idea like, of hey, misunderstanding the concept of acting so badly that you just go... You, you're like, so I'm still me, right? I just created this monster. Hey, I'm... Je- I mean, I mean I'm, I'm Victor Frankenstein, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm Victor Frankenstein. I'm going to go take a nap. Make a monster. I'm going to go make a monster. (laughs) So I think it's funny that they're already remaking Frankenstein. Just after last year, they had the Daniel Radcliffe, James McAvoy one. You guys remember that? They call him Mulligan on that one. Yeah. I I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it because it kind of looked bad. Yeah. I like the one that had Robert De Niro in it. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I didn't like that one either. I don't think I've ever liked a Frankenstein movie. Not even like the original like 1940s. I guess that's fine. And you can't hate Wait, on it. What about Young yeah. Frankenstein? Oh, what about bro, Young Frankenstein? <laughs> what about Frankenweiner or whatever? It's Frankenweenie. Whatever. You know, right? uh, yeah, it's not a dick that's been resurrected. It's a goddamn dog. Isn't that Tim Burton's <laughs> very first movie? I think it is. Uh, yes. I thought he did that like five years ago. Frankenweenie. Uh, no. He did yeah. Frankenweenie, no. and then there's also Frankenweenie. Oh yeah. Wait. Did. So you're saying there's a Frankenweenie and a Frankenweenie? He did Let's one see. way back in the day, and oh, then there's then also the again. animated one. Yeah. 1984 okay. is when the original Frankenweenie. Oh, okay, came out. I didn't ah. know that. And it's live action. And I then he came the back, cartoon. and he did it again, and he was still Tim Burton, so it was exactly yeah, the Shelley same. Shelley Duvall is in it. Oh man, great. Shelley Duvall is always screaming. She is. I think she got a Razzie nomination for uh, The Shining, actually. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I thought she was great. What's a Razzie? Yeah. Razzie's like Is the worst actor. No, it's like the worst actor, the worst movie, the worst director. It's those awards. Oh, good. The reverse so, Oscars. So it's the one you don't want. Yeah, exactly. Every time I read about the Razzie thing, too, like, uh, when Nicholas they... Nicolas Cage is a frequent winner. Yeah. Oh, Every time I read about it, I realize that they're not watching... All of the movies that they could be watching. So, for this let's see pool. how many but, Razzie nominations Nick Cage has got, guys. I think this so, could be a great use of our time. Do people get up and give speeches? Like Sandra Bullock the, did. Yeah, I was really. That was pretty cool. Wait, she, she got a Razzie. She got Steve a Razzie something? for something, and they're all the people in the audience that voted for her to get a Razzie. She gave the uh, copy of the DVD of the movie she got the Razzie for too. I'm pretty sure it was all about Steve. You guys. That seems pretty cool on her part. <laughs> She's like, you guys, like I suck. That's great. Piece. Oh, it was. Uh, I think she got the Razzie for that movie. She, the Holy rom-com shit. she did with uh, One, two, three. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Really? Yeah, where she's his boss, and yeah, and she she's she, actually like from Canada, and so yeah, she's about to get married, deported. So she can keep Who wants to deported. take a guess on how many Razzie nominations Nick Cage has got? Nineteen nominations. Nominations. Twenty three. Twenty three. Nineteen. Nineteen. Zero. He's got 14. 
So <laughs> I All decided right. to go the opposite direction and. Technically, he would have, win if, if this was, was the Price is Right. Price is Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, he would, yeah, have, had chosen, without he would going have had over. chosen one dollar, actually. Yeah. Oh. Let's do Ben Affleck while we're doing One this. cage dollar. Yeah, one cage. So, Left Behind, which I don't get. The movie was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance, Seeking Justice, Drive Angry. Yeah, Seeking Justice is the candy bar movie. Yeah. Season of the Witch, Trespass, Drive Angry. Uh, oh, we got more, multiple awards for uh, Season of the Witch, and Drive Angry, and Trespass. I would imagine. Original Jesus Ghost Christ. Riders, uh, National Treasure, Book of Secrets. Okay, National Treasure should not be on there. <laughs> Next. Well, it's Book of Secrets. That's and like uh, the two third nominations the for Wicker Man. Wicker Man is, is actually, out of all the movies, that's when his Razzie nominations start. Yeah. Wait, how does he get two out of that? Next, by the way, is the movie where a young Jessica Biel falls in love with Nicolas Cage. So, out of those, how many has he won? I'm going to say six. Three. Four. Zero. Oh, I should have yes! picked with my zero. He's never won a single Razzie. Good for you, Nicolas Cage. Proud of you. Yeah. Way to go, buddy. So, um... The final new segment up that we have is Legendary Pictures is very close to closing a deal with Niantic and Nintendo for a live action Pokemon I game. I swear to God, every Pokemon better be a person in a like a costume. Oh, so, I, hope, I hope so. It should be noted that they've been working on this deal since March, I think. So this has nothing to do with Pokemon Go being like the biggest thing in the world I think right it, now. I think it does. I think it just has to do with them being good at calling that it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. That's more than possible because I think that's whenever the original trailer came out for Pokemon Go. Like they they heard about it and they're like, "This is gonna yeah. do something. We should get all yeah. of this early." So yeah, were, when you were downtown, were you there whenever they started playing the Pokemon theme song? Uh, because, probably not, but I have seen and heard multiple vehicles roaming around downtown playing various versions of the theme. Catch them all. So, uh, speaking of the theme, have you heard the uh, the like jazz version of it? That's there's a the jazz internet? version of there's it. There's like a classy jazz version of it, like you'd see in like a here, we're in a jazz bar. Here's the jazz group and the classy, you know, lady in an evening gown who's just got some serious jazz pipes. Yeah, it's it's a sweet version of the song. Awesome. Gonna have to check that one. Our gams went from here to the floor. <laughs> sweet. That's, that's nice, how gams work. Nice gams. <laughs> So, time for trailer talk, gentlemen. <laughs> First trailer up. You all right there? Are you talking fucking Hannah? Are you talking Hannah again? <laughs> nice gams. I don't Jared, know if you guys have been watching Jared's our last plays okay. until dawn. Oh, man, he's done. He's walking he's away leaving. from the mic. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I can now. So the first trailer up that we're going to be talking about is Damien Chazelle's upcoming movie, La La Land. He's written and directed this. It stars Emma Stone, Ryan Gosling, and J.K. Simmons is returning for a new uh, Damien Chazelle movie. He won an Oscar for like one of the best performances of all time for Whiplash last year yeah, he or was, two years ago. He was a very volatile man. So La La Land is about this uh, pianist played by Ryan Gosling. He falls it's in pronounced love. pronounced penist. It's pronounced penis. It actually is pronounced penis. You're right. So um, Ryan Gosling falls in love with Emma Stone. Chemistry they had together in Crazy Stupid Love was phenomenal, and I want them to recapture that magic in a Damien Chazelle movie. They also played love interest in the mostly shitty but pretty fun movie the Gangster, Gangster Squad. Land? Gangster Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie could have been a lot better. Yeah, it should have been. It could have been like, a lot better. But yeah, I'm super stoked for this. And uh, like you said, it has this very surreal feel to it. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know if it's going to be a musical or not. You can definitely tell that David Chazelle like has likes elements of that or something. There yeah. seemed to be a lot of dancing. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Jamie, Damien Chazelle like, like, loves those uh, just yeah. movies Take based around yard. music. Because, you know, <laughs> Whiplash definitely was. Yeah. So... Yeah, it I felt very much like it was a tribute slash. Let's put a new twist on like the the musicals of the of what, yesterday er, early fifties, like Singing in the Rain. It, it just kind of had that element to it. Yeah, thankfully it did not have like a Seven Brides for Seven Brothers feel to it. <laughs> I don't know. I hated that movie when I saw it when I was. 
12 yeah. or something. I'm going to call it right now, and this might be a little risky. This is going to be movie of the year. That's your early pick. That's my early pick. That's risky. Either that or Mr. Fantastic. That's the. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Ghostbusters. I'm pretty sure it's going to be... Uh, Wait, what? Well, uh, Batman v Superman, that piece of shit. That's going <laughs> to be the one. That's definitely movie of the year. Is it Mr. Fuck Fantastic? That is that the uh, movie? Is, I think it's Viggo Mortensen. I don't know. What's the name of that movie coming out? You know I don't know. Captain Fantastic. Who does he play in that, Captain Fantastic? He plays Ben, a.k.a. Captain Fantastic. And George McKay, he was in... Um, Eleven twenty two sixty three. Oh yeah, he's gonna be in that as well. But uh, next trailer up is Table Nineteen. This is the newest Duplass Brothers film, directed by Jeffrey Blitz. He's done your review with Adam. Is it A- Andy Daly? Uh yeah yeah. Forrest McNeil on the show, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, Table Nineteen. It's about this young woman played by Anna Kendrick who was originally invited to a wedding and then. The best man broke up with her. She shows up to the wedding anyway, and they put her at the quote-unquote shitty table that everybody thinks should not have been invited. Like Daryl's there. Daryl's there. <laughs> Lisa Kudrow, Stephen Merchant's there. June Squibb. I June mean, Squibb is there. Ever since her performance in uh, Nebraska, yeah, I'm like, I just got to see everything she's in now. She was in The Nice Guys as well. She was in The Nice Guys. Yeah. She was great. Yeah. This movie's going to be pretty funny. It has everything going for it. So I don't know anything about Jeffrey Blitz, honestly, besides no. the fact that you love him for review. Yeah, review's really funny. People should watch that. So um, I've never seen Rocket Science or Spellbound either. but uh, Neither have I. All right. Um, the next movie up is called The Girl with All the Gifts. Now, this movie just looks fucking weird. I don't know about you guys, but it's... But it's going to have a good box office open since it's about zombies and everybody is zombies. Yeah. People like zombies. It has Glenn Close. Mm. Uh, is it Gemma Arterson or Arterton? Is that how you say her name? I think so. Okay. And uh, Patty Con- Considine is in it as well. It's about a young girl who, t- I guess she technically... Has the zombie virus, but it's just not affecting her like it does everybody else. So they're trying to make a vaccine out of her. Very Last of Us. Yeah, except less, you know, we got to crack her head open right away thing. Yeah. Oh, actually, can we edit me out of that? No one needs to hear that. I will get flayed for that. That is the end of The Last of Us. Oh, no, I don't have to play it. (laughs) Oh, that game has been out for like... What, five yeah, years I now? I mean, if at this point... Long it came enough out, that it came for free okay. with my PS4. It came <laughs> out on the PlayStation 3. It's a super great game. You're Still okay. play it. It's about the emotional connection, not about the ending. Exactly. So this movie's directed by Cole McCarthy. He's done such things as Outcast, Dream Team, and he's done a few episodes of... Outcast with Nicolas Cage and Hayden Christensen? Yes. I don't know. Just had to check. <laughs> um, <laughs> but have you seen Peaky Binders? No, I haven't. No, he's it's done been on my Netflix isn't list it blinders? for two years. Is it Blinders? It I think be. there's an L in there, yeah. I probably just was reading through it too quick. I Peaky haven't binders seen Blinders is when like Jareth has a binder full of information and I'm trying to look around the corner. Yeah, Peaky yeah. Blinders, I just probably Whereas read a Peaky it Blinder is somebody who like, pokes around a corner and jabs you in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> two very different things. Surprise! <laughs> ah! I but wish it, this would have been the Binder one. <laughs> this is based off of Mike Carey's novel. I guess it's like a bestseller. I've never heard of it, but uh, I'm not going to say it's not. So, yeah, I will probably be seeing this one. Not because it's a zombie movie, but I actually do think it looks really intriguing. But the next movie up is the one that I'm super stoked for. It's called Bleed for This. It's the true story of boxer Vinny Pazienza. Or Pazienza. Vinny Paz, a.k.a. the Tasmanian Devil. To repeat what I said after we watched the, the uh, trailer, pretty sure this movie's going to make me feel bad about what I've done with my life. Yeah. Stars uh, should, Miles We Teller. can do that at any time. I mean, oh, yeah. let's tell Jareth how, he, how he's falling short in existence. Don't do it. I will tear all of you down with me. We could just yeah. Except you, you're challenge, fine. Right? I don't that's, know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Movie stars Miles Teller, Katie Seagal, too. Aaron Eckhart... Ted Levine, uh, so Buffalo Bill is going to be in this guy's just FYI. Okay. I'm and how in. do you say his name? Siren Hines? 
I think so. Okay, I'm going to go with it, so, yes. Um, yeah, uh, the Tasmanian devil, Vinnie Paz, he was in a car accident, broke his neck, and said, I don't care, I'm going to get back into boxing after my neck heals. And he did. It's a pretty great story. I'm a sucker for boxing movies, and I'm a sucker for biopics, so. So did Aaron Eckhart lose his hair, or is that probably, a, pro- a prosthetic? Probably just shaved his head. No, but like, uh, both. Probably the hide or receding hairline. R- well, it, no, it looked like completely gone in the middle, you know, like. Yeah, yeah like it was George all Costanza. the way up to like here. He yeah. had one hand length of hair missing. I was thinking he probably shaved his head bald for like. And then they had like part of it grow in and then did something else. Yeah. I don't know. It was very confusing to look at. You didn't know it was him. That is not the guy you very want upsetting. to tell you to keep smoking. No, and also not the guy I could believe in to change Gotham. Gotham. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't believe in that Harvey Dent. He, he doesn't also, look like not scary a guy face. Who would have a really powerful argument with Nicole Kidman because their kid died? Yeah, and also not a guy who would scalp someone. And also Wait, not where, a guy where did he who scalp would fall someone? in love with Nurse Betty. <laughs> Nurse Betty, yeah. And also not a guy who would fall in love with Julia Roberts and try and save a town <laughs> whose water supply has been contaminated. I forgot about that. That was his first movie, I think. Probably close. Wait, holy shit, he's in that. Aaron Brockovich, yeah. yeah. Holy fuck. He's the biker next door neighbor. He's God. in everything, guys. Aaron Eckhart's in a lot of stuff. And God also damn. not a guy who would also play Frankenstein's monster. He God, did. Are they just sucking that franchise dry. Yeah. Just make a good goddamn movie And already. also, not a guy who would hunt aliens in that one movie, like Los Angeles 321 or something. It was Los Battle Angeles. Battle for Los Angeles. Battlefield Los Angeles. Yeah. Wow. So okay, did we just go through just his gonna, entire IMDb We're going to read page? the whole filmography. Now that I think about it, he's been in some shitty movies. Yeah, it's pretty high end or low end for Aaron Eckhart. Yeah, he's not just, really a lot of middle. He's, yeah, he's just going for a home run every time. It doesn't matter if he strikes out. <laughs> Checks all. He's just swinging. <laughs> so, uh, final movie trailer we're going to be talking about: Imperium. This Features is the... considerably less magic, considering how many <laughs> wizards are in it. Yeah, and one. the fact that Dan. Well, I think wizard is a, an actual title. In the Ku Klux Klan, this is oh, really nice. yeah, believe, Grand yeah. Wizard and then Grand Dragon. Well, just yeah, they so have like you know what a ridiculous organization. I mean, already that was my opinion, but I mean, like I do be not taken ap- seriously, and they wear ghost sheets over their heads and call themselves wizards. Yeah, I don't approve wizards of and them, dragons, and dragons. but they've got cool titles for their ranks. Well, of course you would think that. I mean, you you run around with like a oh, I'm sorry, they're not lieutenants and half the time left he, hand dick he suckers. He is the perpetual wizard. Don't forget. So. Yeah, what rank oh, is I that in the KKK? Forget. By the way, uh, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to entertain. <laughs> I this. don't know. Let's roll a twenty perpetual sided wizard die and find probably out. Probably wizard. Probably grand wizard in training. He's probably being groomed. Oh, great. Mm. This is going to end well for me. <laughs> yeah. Do the KKK well, have to roll like a stealth attack or something before they go invade a town or whatever it is they it's do? It's a sneak roll. Well, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> or get like a fire brand power before they set a cross on fire? What a bunch of twats. Yeah. It's a cantrip. It's a So lot of this movie, spell. Imperium, we haven't even got to it yet. It stars Daniel Radcliffe with <laughs> Tony Collette, Byrne Gorman, uh, Nestor... Carbonell and uh, we all remember Sam Trammell, aka uh, Sam from uh, True Blood. Swear to God, if the comments are just full of people being like, "Is Jareth actually in the KKK?" <laughs> <laughs> then I fucking <laughs> I know Our where two of you live. Okay, Arch, Arch Crusader. I'm gonna get him every single time we put out a. How podcast. many times in this movie though is someone gonna be like, "I hate you, Sam Rolot"? Because that, that happens in True Blood 700 times, where An they episode? say his first and last God name. Goddamn you, Sam Merlo. Sam or not, you broke my heart for the last time. You goddamn <laughs> monkey man. <laughs> you, you turn into you a turn dog. In, you I, turn into a dog and a monkey and a bull. I'm tired of buying your flea medicine, Sam or not. <laughs> you turn into a mosquito. <laughs> Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. You suck my blood just as much as them vampers. Yep. I do declare. You flew into that one vampire as a gnat, then you turned into a man and you exploded him. <laughs> oh my god! I, oh my god! Wait, hold on. That's a really yeah, no, something. That's a real thing. So he turns into a gnat, flies inside of a vampire, turns into a human, and busts through the vampire. But what? What? No. And he's yeah. 
It's so awesome. It's the best thing that ever happens in that show. <laughs> so what is he? Why does he change? He's a shifter. He's, yeah, he's a shapeshifter. Okay, cool. So you can just change into whatever the fuck he wants and blow Doesn't up matter. stuff? Yeah, sure. as long as he touches the So animal. is he equally not... He's like not an anamorph. A, why is he equally <laughs> not affected as the thing that is constricting his growth? Because he's same or a lot. Yeah, you would um, have to ask... Uh, whoever it is that wrote that episode. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why isn't was, he just crushed? Um, It it, it makes sense. So Tr- Imperium is about Harry Potter joining the KKK. Infiltrating. Infiltrating. I was getting there, damn it. No, you said joining. Joining it's as different. an FBI spy. God yeah. damn. So yeah, he's an FBI agent and he's going undercover into the KKK to get as much information as he can it's a super radical branch of the kkk that's like 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 radical as in like super out like super no, like they're radical yeah yeah they're, they're not like doing board. flips this on skits this is a 19 <laughs> if only this movie would be so much more amazing <laughs> <laughs> So basically, I don't condone the, the KKK even on skateboards uh, or on a pirate ship. Daniel Radcliffe totally re- looks like a tiny, tiny Edward Furlong from American History X <laughs> in this in this trailer. <laughs> That's what because Daniel Radcliffe, I believe, is one foot seven, <laughs> yeah, and it comes across in the trailer. Oh yeah, he is shorter than everyone. He he kind of looks like he maybe weighs eighty five pounds, yeah. soaking wet in this movie. Yeah. So let's find out. Is there a way that we can find out how tall Daniel Radcliffe is? That's Type it into here. Google. I'm sure it's there. All right. So you guys banter for a little bit while I look this up. So what do I, you guys think about this trailer? Does the movie look good to you? It looks good. I don't know that's the kind of movie I want to see. It looks very good, very intense. I mean, it seems like something I might watch. Yeah. I mean, see how it is. I mean, I, I kind of got my fill of Nazis after watching Green Room last night for like a little bit. Wow. But, uh, you know. Daniel Radcliffe's 5'5". Yep, that's pretty short. Jeebus. Yeah. He's shorter than Emma Watson. And he's shorter than Elijah Wood, who is a hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> what, is that... he? How tall is Elijah Wood? 5'6". <laughs> oh, well, okay. That's... <laughs> when he actually is really short, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Daniel Craig's only 5'10". He's a short bond. Is he? He's still... I feel like none of... A... Sean Connery. How tall is Sean Connery? Let's guess. make this how tall are Well, they? okay, six hold on. Sean how Connery's tall is Sean foot. Connery both sober and drunk? Yeah, those are two different things. He's zero feet tall when he's drunk because he's just on the ground. Sean Connery's 6'2". Yeah. Oh. I guess Roger Moore is around that as well. 6'1". Pierce Timothy Brosnan. Dalton. Timothy Dalton. He's not on here, but Clint Eastwood's 6'4". Jesus Christ. Yeah. I noticed that whenever he was palling around with that orangutan in uh, Every Which Way But Loose the other day. That goddamn orangutan. <laughs> It's pronounced orangutan. Like the tang, the yeah. punch? Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. So That's why they've got orangutans. As there. Timothy Dalton, 6'2", <laughs> as well. So, yeah, Daniel Craig's a short bond. He is a short bond. Every one of them is a bond. Well, That's six, all going to change one. when they cast Daniel Radcliffe as James Bond. Yeah. God, that would blow my mind. So, that's we got to get out of trailer talk. We just got to jump ship now. Let's move on now to the fair bear and forecast. Yeah, after we accused me of being a fucking Nazi. No. No. KKK. A Klansman. <laughs> Get your racial I mean, you're still a hate-filled piece of different. shit, but you're, you're not going that uh, far. I'm sorry. What were they burning on that lawn? It looked like a cross and two fucking swastikas. Not one. <laughs> two swastikas. Yeah, so the these are the movies you can go and see in theaters this fair. week. You can go and see Ghostbusters. You can go and see The Infiltrator. That's the new Brian Cranston movie where he is also an FBI. And so much agent. infiltration in yeah, movies worried. these days. Yeah. Uh, Cafe Society and Undrafted. And, yep, that's about it. Sounds good. So, yeah, everybody go and check those out. Have not seen The Infiltrator yet, but Ghostbusters. If... I think that would be a good movie to go and see like with a group of people. I was there for the premiere at IMAX 3D to see it, and there were 30 people in the theater. Wow. What? Yeah. I know. That seems... The movie started at 7. I got there at 6.55, and I still got to sit in the middle, like third so row So people the weren't very interested in it. 
I, I, I get that there's some backlash against it. I just would have expected it well, still yeah, to have I done almost, better. I literally was thinking about going and seeing it last night, and I didn't end up doing it because I ended up seeing a movie with my family members who didn't want to see it, yeah. <laughs> which is how I ended up seeing The Nice Guys, which was really good. That's I would have gone movie. and seen it if I wasn't working, probably, and somebody wanted to go see it. Are you guys ready to play IMDb Idiots? I'm just going to not even use um, my phone. You yes. want to use mine? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm just going to guess. Okay. It'll be great. I'm going to win this time. I can feel it. All right. For those of you who do not know what IMDb Idiots... I, ah, God damn it. IMDb For Idiots. IMDb Idiots is... David, I don't know if you've... I have listened one. enough. I'm familiar with how this game works. Fantastic. Oh, he listens. Well, for all the new uh, listeners out there, I'm going to name off facts about a video game show or movie, and my three guests have to guess what of those medias I am talking about. First to three guess correct answers wins. You only get one guess per round. Unless everybody gets it wrong, then y'all get back in. So It's like uh, like Red Rover or something. Yeah. Or That's actually not, not at all. At all. Red Rover. Not played Red or Rover. Uh, <laughs> jump Rope. I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, roughly the rules of jump I rope. I, ever since I turned 30, there's no... I don't remember any of this All anymore. them damn internet games. Yeah. <laughs> so, like jump rope? <laughs> like jump rope. Like jump rope. <laughs> I've got the jump rope app I'm on my phone. I'm sick of all these kids playing jump rope on their phones. <laughs> jump rope go. I guarantee you there is a jump rope app on a phone. Oh, there yeah. is. Red Definitely. Rover's going to be in the in the expansion for Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Send Pikachu right over. Pokemon Rove. <laughs> so <laughs> the first medium up is a movie. <gasps> It Ooh. is produced by J.J. Abrams. J.J. <gasps> Abrams. And it stars Leslie Kaplan and T.J. Miller. Mm, is it cool. Cloverfield? Cloverfield. Damn it. I was super oh, close. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should have known that because... T.J. Miller. And also my thing my thing for Lizzie Kaplan that is she won't answer my calls. Do you watch uh, Master of Sex? No, I haven't yet. She's in it and I guess like everything every But I thing. watched Party Down and that was awesome. Unfortunately the rest of this podcast is lost because the software we used to record became corrupted. But luckily we were able to recover what you've listened to already. We thank everybody for listening, and please make sure you check out all of our social media links at forward slash Flick Freaks. I'd like to thank David, Jareth, and Brian for showing up today, and we hope you all enjoyed yourself. So, until next time, Godspeed to 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs>